Hello to all my friends at Commonwealth Realm. It's me, Mario. Woohoo! Mamma mia, you number one. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Commonwealth Realm during E3 2017 week. I am Joey Ferris, and joining me, as always, is Conrad Vanez. Hello, everyone, and we have a very special treat for you today, since uh, as one of very few YouTube channels, we have direct footage of Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, direct feed. None of that camera on the uh, the TV stuff that most people do, but we also have some of that as well. But we got to play 20 minutes of Super Mario Odyssey, and we're going right into the Sand Kingdom, or what we better known call it better known as Mexico. <laughs> Mexico! Uh, Mexico. It'll always be Mexico to us. Let's be honest. Because it, Mexico. And it is Mexico because you, you have coins shaped at Doritos and, yeah, exactly. and so on. But the, the versatility you have in this game is just uh, incredible. You got side quests, you, you got uh, such a control over Mario. Uh, the, the hat uh, mechanic is just so deep. Compared yeah. to what we expected in Inside Super Mario Odyssey. Mm -hmm. The name of the hat is actually Cappy, and uh, I almost said Crappy every time. It's just like, it's a, it's a Cappy name. It's a Crappy name. Yeah. We didn't really explore the town that much, because we want to actually take a look at the actual level itself. But yeah, the town looks really neat with the NPCs, and you saw some with exclamation marks on their heads, which initiate a side quest. Then what you've also seen right there is the return to a traditional health bar akin to Super Mario's Sunshine and 64 and, you know, galaxy type ways, no more mushrooms, that sort of thing as well, and we're being attacked by many Goombas. Yeah. Conrad's playing this right now, so... Yeah, yeah the thing is that uh, uh, we were told to play it with a motion-based uh, Joy-Con, mm -hmm. which uh, probably isn't a preferable way to play this game. <laughs> I think Pro Controller is prob probably the best. Mm, yeah, and so. what, what just happened? You just turned into a freaking telescope that floats. Yeah, but the thing was, I wasn't able to get out. I just wanted to see that uh, 2D section. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, that's right, and we're going to get to that real soon. Yeah, yeah uh, I remember we were talking about the the robot in the uh the candy world because that's where i first noticed it i was like is this rob the robot what the hell's going on but no it's just, it's just like your your hat possesses things like you can literally possess people possess some enemies and, and sometimes possess inanimate objects and it's kind of weird how it, that's determined but you were about to see it in action right here and what you turn into a bullet bill what the hell? <laughs> yeah, and the best part about it is well, it's very controllable. It's a very casual experience, uh, just like Mario should be. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, we are just about to take another bullet bill and get one of the moonshines. Or try, try to get the moonshine, but wasn't that, isn't this an E-rated game? Why is there alcohol? <laughs> uh, kill me. And yeah, my voice is shot, as you can tell, because... Uh, Metroid uh, Prime. The Metroid Prime 4 reveal. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy one. But yeah, that moonshine, basically the the key collectibles of the game, they, they act as kind of the the big green coins, wouldn't you think so? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, we see in this game a ton of combination between both Super Mario 64, Sunshine, the Galaxy series, and even uh, 3D World. So it's definitely the culmination of the Mario franchise. Yeah, it's definitely the best of all the worlds, I should say. Definitely takes inspiration from all three games. I'm just repeating what you say, what you're saying at this point, but it's because it's just it's just so true. I agree. And uh, oh man, the coolest part right here. Okay, not just yet, but you know, sliding up these sand dunes is actually pretty neat as well. But the 2D sections, this reminds me a lot of uh, a link between worlds when Link would go up to a wall and then turn into his little 2D self. Let's look at that. And no. what, are you, what are you even trying to do here? Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about jumping the. <coughs> The 2D, <laughs> 2D pipe, oh, but uh, yeah, what I like about this uh, this section here, uh, I was jumping straight into that bullet bill. <laughs> yeah. But playing with the Joy-Con was a pain in my opinion. Yeah. And I... you will see that especially in the next level. Mm -hmm. and, and that oh, that you know that was just bullshit. That was total bullcrap. <laughs> that is typical of things you would see in Kaiser Mario or mm -hmm. Mario Maker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. And then, well, you gotta go all the way back, which means that we gotta keep running, running, running. And the reason why they made us play with the Joy-Cons is because they wanted us to, like, take a look at the, the motion-controlled options of the game. Hence the and emphasis on the word options. This, these are totally optional ways. Like, you can fling the hat by shaking the remote if you want to, which I did a few times in my play session. But other than that, you can just press Y or X to, to, to do that thing. So, yeah, and... 
you, you, you were trying to butt stop on it, but you couldn't figure out what to do. Yeah, I tried to find out how to ground pound, but because you have a little bit different uh, control scheme for this game compared to previous Mario games. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's the left trigger as usual. So at this point we were just changing. Uh, we decided to do, since each demo was 10 minutes, uh, I did 5 minutes uh, here to begin with, then Joseph took 5 minutes here, and then five, another 5 minutes in the next level, and I finished off. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's then I was like, okay, let's let's do some 2D Mario time. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and yes, that that it was. It's just a really neat type of feature that they put in here, and it's kind of sometimes I feel like it's kind of out of place, seeing as this never really was been in a 3D Mario game for whatever reason. And it's not like nostalgia is a theme of this game, but still, it's really cool nonetheless. And I don't even know what I was trying to do here. I was trying to get that. I was trying to get a bullet bill, actually, but I was getting really impatient, and then I found a sparkly thing. And knowing me, I get easily distracted. I'm just like, let's go to that sparkly thing, and it was another moonshine, but we have to go all the way over there. And how else are we going to do that but wait for a bullet bill to get here? And I think it's just really neat. Yeah, and at that point, I just said to Joseph that you need to use the camera, the damn camera. <laughs> I know we didn't have a camera in 3D World, but you need to take the advantage of and the that's, camera. Yeah, that's why I never really use the camera. I'm just not And used you will see in a minute why you need to use the camera. Mm -hmm. or, or a second. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, a, like a second. See, look at that. And then if, it, if you look, you see a blue switch, which I noticed, and I noticed it again. And uh, what do you know? <coughs> Sorry, my voice is shot. What do you expect? Metroid Prime 4 does it to you. But, yeah, and then I'm like a dummy, I just decide, let's take the long way back. Because the representative there was telling me there's a shortcut, but I didn't listen to her. Because, uh, social anxiety, what are you going to do? But, but yeah, and then I possess that bullet bill, and I go back. And I just need to point out, this game, like, you're watching it on a computer monitor right now, I know. But, you need to see this on a TV, because this footage that you're watching right now doesn't do it justice. This game is absolutely gorgeous on an LED LCD display. It's quite possibly the best looking game on the Switch right now and probably ever, maybe, who knows? But yeah, Nintendo really knows how to optimize their own hardware when it comes to their own games. And I decided to go back and do the 2D spot again, but I'm just trying to rush through it with my glorious speedrunning skills of just straight up crouching for no reason and more crouching for no reason, and there, well, we're back. And I'm just like, yep, let's book it, and I dashed. Yeah, because we had like two minutes left at this point, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or so. So I like the blend of uh, both uh, 2D and 3D sections. It's it's such a nice uh, homage and callback to, to 2D Mario, and especially since they used the art style of the first Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that. Oh man, and if you can hear like the music in the background faintly, I know that our voices are louder than the music, but it switches to an 8-bit theme. And it's, it still plays the same music, but they switch the style of it to 8-bit, and it's really, really cool. Very neat attention to detail right there. And I'm just jumping, jumping, as usual, crouching to avoid those damn bullet bills, and I'm just really liking this feature so far. <coughs> exactly, and you always have an objective, even though you get uh, one of those moons, you, you can still continue playing. You, you just got a moon. In other Mario games, you would have been sent back and had to start the level over. Exactly. I thought Not that was in about this happening. game. Not in this game. Yeah, you just continue the level, dude. You don't even, like... You don't, you don't go back like you said. You keep going, you find the rest of them. Which also makes me wonder how big these levels are. Because I felt like in the old Mario games, you would go back to the previous, uh, going back to the previous level would add to like the replayability, like make the game experience longer. Or in this case, you could probably knock out a whole level in probably an hour or two. And it's just, uh, it's a really revolutionary way of thinking when it comes to Mario. And as you can see, we got some little hat puzzles right here. The little Cappy is just doing his or her thing. I don't know what the gender of the hat is. Don't want to assume any uh, hat genders in here, but yeah. And uh, we're just doing some puzzles, which makes it so the platforms move closer to this area and yep yeah, as i've stated in inside super mario odyssey the mexico level which is now called the sand kingdom the purple goo over there is dangerous but we all knew that now didn't we indeed and uh, the best thing about this level and in general the super mario odyssey is that how naturally everything flows mm -hmm. you can see uh, the enemy design the placement uh, the, the fact that uh, you have to adapt a little bit 
bit by bit, of course, but uh, it gets more and more complicated. And you got a mixed bag for both casuals and for the more hardcore player, depending on your playing style. Yeah, as we can see, we just possess this weird tiki-looking thing, and uh, it has the, the lens of truth from the Legend of Zelda, which uh, you use. You basically use the to find the invisible platforms, as hinted at by the birds just floating on nowhere. And uh, I'm not knowing what the hell I'm doing, and I'm just going around collecting those purple coins, which we've also which we should, we've also successfully predicted are used to buy exclusive things, along with regular coins, which are used to buy not exclusive things you can buy in the crazy shop. But we're gonna get to that when we get to the next level, being super Mar being super Mar being what am I talking about? Being new. Let Charles Martin there just say thanks for playing for now, and we'll be moving over to the big city. <coughs> yes. So now let's get over to the second level, which is Metro Kingdom, or as we prefer to call it, New Donk City. Because that is what it's called, and it's, it's it's just a more catchy name, honestly. And then we see Mayor Pauline, which if you guys didn't know, Pauline was the very first original Mario princess that you had to save. She's not really a princess. She's damsel just, in distress. Damsel in distress. You know, Mario's girlfriend. And now she is in power. She is the mayor of New Donk City. And yeah. Yeah. So we can see just a little bit of how the gameplay works, how the uh, Mario transforms, possesses uh, basically everything. And already in the beginning, we tried uh, to break the physics engine yeah, exactly. present in the game and find out uh, how to get coins from uh, street posts. Yeah, I've always wanted to see people do that. They never really did it. So now we get to do it. And what do you know? We got the crazy cap shops. And I didn't know this, but there's apparently two different sections of the shop. The yellow section we're in right now is meant for words where you can use coins, like the yellow coins that you gather everywhere to actually buy stuff, which also means that we were correct on our prediction of the coins you would you collect to serve a greater purpose than to just refill your health. You're used to buy things, and we're going to buy a sweet fedora and a sweet mafia looking suit so we can be a part of the Italian mafia. So it's going to be great. There's a scene with Don Vito, and it's Oscar-worthy, honestly. Yeah, after all, it's all about brother business in uh, Mario, so it's it's just fitting. It's just super fitting, you know? And the purple area, which we're about to go into in a second, when I decide to leave the freaking shop. There we go. Godfather uh, Mario. Yes, it's a godfather. Uh, take the cannoli, that kind of thing. And I didn't have any purple coins ahead of time to get uh, enough things, but... This is where you can buy exclusive merch, like the Mario Maker outfit, and trophy, and sticker, and yeah, the, some of the ju exclusive stuff being the coins you collect in this world, you can use to buy exclusive stuff in the Purple Crazy Cap Shop, and I think that's really neat. Yeah, exactly, and, and uh, you may, <coughs> might have noticed that one of those uh, suits looked like the um, um, Super Mario Maker Mario. Yeah, that's, that's builder why, Mario. Yeah, that's why I said you didn't listen. I'm just gonna... yeah. But at this point, we just try to possess taxis and so on. But uh, there's a, a catch with the taxis. As long as there is a driver, you can't possess them. Oh yeah, that's what the, that's what it is. I was wondering why I couldn't possess any taxis. So at this point, uh, Joseph was trying to jump some. I was trying to f see. I put, I don't know how. I possessed this little little thing in the flick, the flick of the, the, the wrist. Look at the flick of the wrist, something like that. And you possess like electric lines. Like we would not have been able to predict this in any episode of Inside Super Mario Odyssey. Like really though, it was really well hidden in the first trailer, and uh, they they said that the hat would be doing a, a ton, but we didn't have no idea it would be this much. Really though, like it's honestly. It's so creative. This is why I love Nintendo. They do things that you really just would not expect. Like fucking rocks. Fucking rocks, dude. Like, honestly. And then I go up to Pauline to start this little side quest. Which is to... We're, we're essentially just bringing the band back together. Where she's looking... She's trying to scout some musicians, even though there's a freaking drummer right next to her. Because you can't just talk to him himself. I guess, I guess the mayor is just too busy or just too lazy to. Yeah, too lazy to talk to the guy. I get some really weird. Like, I know this is overblown, but I totally get it after playing it. I get some really weird Sonic 06 vibes from looking at these people with their, the way their mouths are moving and stuff. And it's just like, whoa. Yeah, and here we see inside the town hall, the auditorium with uh, 
some random NPCs cherishing Polly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just uh, they're just like, please let me be a part of your band. We know we need you. I think at this point I gave yeah I have some right here at this point because I give it back to you to to get to playing some stuff. Yeah, and I'll be moving into <coughs> one of the mini levels uh, or mini games that are present within uh, the different levels. Exactly. Because you have a main level and then you have just like in Sunshine some side levels. Yeah, and how else are you gonna do that? But by possessing a rocket. Yeah. You know, because you just can't. You just. Or get tired of Uber every once in a while, and you're just like, I'm just gonna transport there through via rocket. And uh, you were you were about to do this mini game, but you just said no, no, we need to we need to go and do New Dog City. Yeah, we wanted to do something else, and besides, this was also shown during the Treehouse. So we wanted to do something just as they, you asked on uh, Discord to do something that we haven't done before. And here you see uh, a little bit of uh, example of how the warping system will be in the game, but because we were in the different level within the level itself, we were not able to warp out, so we had to press the minus button in order to get out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, get out! Yeah, it's, like, it's such a good movie. But yeah, we just had to go back to the... But actually, she rocket. was wrong, but we had to get back to the rocket because, well, it's a, it's a different level it's much within different. the same level. Yeah, Obviously. exactly, but it's still... So at this point, we just try to explore as much as possible of uh, New Donk City. Uh, by first getting back by uh, this electrical cord and then just try to find some shortcuts or some hidden secrets. Yeah. The only problem is that playing with the Joy-Con is not very precise, uh, especially when you try to move with two j different Joy-Cons separately. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's interesting, you don't have lives anymore. You just lose money. Yeah, you just lose money. I didn't know that. But then again, you have to now. pay for health services, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, just, we don't have universal health care here. And it's it's kind of messed up, but you know what? What can you do? Yeah. And yeah, I like the I like the whole. Um, oh, I love this part. I don't give me platforms. I uh, love here this. I messed up. Yeah, I, I love messed this. up. I just tried to make a ground pound, and mm. instead of ground pounding. We flew down. Yeah, and now, oh, hey, you don't take fall damage in this game anymore. Like, no, not at all, and that is maybe fitting for this game. But I guess they will just be adding some bullshit challenges in order to compensate for it. Well, quite possibly, yeah, but I'm just glad that it's a true platformer and doesn't have any falling damage. Yeah, so here we have a little bit of rooftop action, testing out the power cords. And a little bit of the rooftops. There's a lot to do in New Dark City. Yeah, Honestly. indeed, there's a ton to do. Mm -hmm. And this this level just screams exploration. Yeah, it's like, how can you how do you not want to explore this place? Like, who do you think you are for not wanting to explore this? Obviously, and there's mm -hmm. uh, side quests on every corner of the street. And we try to possess as many items as, uh, or people as possible. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, now you're delivering pizzas, you're Spider-Man, oh. oh. yeah, yeah, and you can jump with the scooter, uh, and you can, of course, you can't drive all the pedestrians because this is, after all, a Mario game, not Grand Theft Auto, yeah. but you definitely have the references, though. Yeah, it's so good, so good, and man, oh man, you're just, you're just flying around, and this is also my favorite part right here. <laughs> oh my god, this section. Oh my god, and I just saw, like, Okay, you were trying to possess car, which I would have done first thing. Yeah. But then, but then you were like, okay, let's possess this guy. Totally freaky and sadistic. Yeah, and then steering this car was a total mess. Yeah, uh, it's tank controls, and the thing probably moves faster than Sin. Yeah. So that doesn't help either. Yeah. It's just like that scene from Austin Powers. So it's uh, one of many examples of a mini game within one of the levels, and I love that they have added all these extras. That wasn't necessarily needed to be there, but still, we're talking about Nintendo, so just like in Breath of the Wild, they will add hundreds of things on top of what they, is required in the Mario game. Yes, exactly, and we that's why we love the, that's one of the reasons why we love the company. They tend to go above and beyond like what is expected, you know? Like if Breath of the Wild was just like a straight Zelda game uh, that was just having to be open world, it would have been fine with it, but no, they just had to take the extra mile and do that. Same with Super Mario Odyssey, they're doing a lot of new things with this while also bringing back some of the old. What did you do? I actually possessed uh, 
the entrance to a sewer. That's really weird, and you're about to find the Ninja Turtles down there. But it makes sense, and Mario's a plumber, so why not? Why not, dude? Just why not? Yeah, and there's just... And then you have those mini uh, level challenges, a little bit similar to what you had in Sunshine, in order to get some of the, the shines. Hmm. Yeah, 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 why do you always catch me when I'm yawning? <laughs> but at this point, uh, we have very little time, so I actually wanted to just see uh, the entire area, but it turned out that it, the demo lasts a little bit longer than 20 minutes, and that meant that we were able to actually get the moon star that we see yes. here. Mm -hmm. And it's... I like this a little bit. It's... Typical Nintendo level design. Mm -hmm. yes. Or Mario level design. Yes, it's uh, it's also very pretty challenging as well. Well, it's not that much challenging, it's just a matter of uh, just uh, knowing uh, which door to knock down. Yeah, absolutely. And... And you're, getting, you're trying to get all them collectibles. Yeah. There you go. And you got it. You did it. Yeah, you we're did now it, reaching, boy. We're slowly reaching the end of uh, this playthrough, but uh, uh, the, f the game will be full of the, these type of mini challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you'll have to complete a, a set of these in order to advance to the, to the next world. Because we still don't know what the hatchet is fueled by. Yeah, we don't know what, if there's even a hub world or anything. We might, I, I'm, I'm betting that there really isn't a hub world, and then we just have to choose which, which worlds we want to go to. Yeah, it's supposed to be an odyssey, and here we just wanted to see a little bit of the Donkey Kong section, but that was when the time ran out. We got uh, approximately, well, almost 22 minutes. Yes. So that was great. Um, uh, the representative from Nintendo were, of course, very helpful. And we also want to finally thank uh, Berg Sala and the representatives from Nintendo Denmark and Nintendo Finland for setting up this private session for us uh, at their um, press booth at E3. Yes, absolutely. Thank you guys so much. And uh, man, it was really fun playing Super Mario Odyssey and we'll be here all week to, to update you on other stuff. So if you can, please subscribe. You can, so subscribe. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll update you more throughout the week at E3. And here's finally a good reason to subscribe. We are doing a 100k giveaway. And of course, it's my birthday, so that's another reason to subscribe. So in the meantime, guys and gals, we will see you in the next video.